In this episode, you're going to learn about the Big Four. Now, I know that sounds like some sort of boy band or sports competition, but it's actually rocks. Four really valuable types of rocks, and they're all found right here in North Carolina. Welcome to the NC Everything Podcast. I'm your host, Curtis, and this is the weekly show where I talk about everything that has anything to do with North Carolina. Now, I know some of you are new listeners and some of you are coming back for the 84th time. Whatever reason you have for being here, I'm glad you're here. Now, if while you're listening to this episode, you feel like this isn't the the episode for you, you can check out all my other 83 episodes at www.thencevertingpodcast.com. And you can also check me out on YouTube. I think I have five or six episodes on that. Um, it's growing every week, but it's still still pretty new. Now I'll promote myself a little bit more at the end of the show, but for now let's do our, our housekeeping thing. Um, last week I said that Kristen from Greensboro had a suggestion. She reached out to me and it actually came from a couple of her friends. So that suggestion that I thanked Kristen for actually came from Mitch and Megan. Kristen was just a mediator. So thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Megan. And thank you, Kristen, for mediating that suggestion. Also, I have the camera flipped a, a different way this time. So uh, if I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm, I'm looking at the wrong end of the camera. And if you're just listening instead of watching, that makes no sense, but don't worry about it. And while I'm talking about suggestions, I also had a, a new listener write in. Her name is Lisa, and she showed up with a suggestion. So the next next couple weeks are scheduled, but uh, probably the next two episodes after that, they're going to be listener suggestions. And last week's Ronnie Millsap, I had a note in my notes that said that was a suggestion by Rip from Smithfield, although when I listened back, I had forgot to mention that. But Rip, as always, thank you for your suggestions. And the last thing I'm going to say about any of that is if you have an idea or suggestion, go to the website, www.thencevertingpodcast.com, and you can hit contact, or you can just put a backslash contact when you type that out, and you can reach out to me, say hello, and suggest just about anything you want. If it's appropriate for the show, I'll find a spot for it. But I am trying to get ahead, so right now I'm a couple weeks ahead. If you suggest something... Uh, sometimes I can get it in pretty quickly, but right now it's about two weeks out. So, uh, just, just bear with me. All right. That's enough of that. So let's go ahead and get into the content. Like I said, today I'm going to be talking about North Carolina's big four and that's not exclusive to North Carolina. The big four is a gemstone phrase for rubies, sapphires, diamonds, and emeralds. That's the big four gemstones in the the jewelry world, the gem world. But what is kind of rare is that all four of these have been found in North Carolina. And the way this episode is going to work, rubies and sapphires are going to kind of be together because they're kind of similar. I don't have a a ton of stuff on them. Then I'm going to be talking about diamonds, and I have probably a little less on on diamonds. But then I'm going to wrap up with emeralds. And emeralds is my favorite, but I also have the most content on emeralds. And you'll understand why by the time I get to it. And just to let you know, I'm going to be talking about crystal powers, um, the, the healing powers of crystal. I'm not trying to push that belief on you. If you don't believe, that's fine. But for those of you who do believe, I am going to kind of run down the, the metaphysical uh, healing powers of the crystals. So let's jump right into it and start with rubies. Now, most of you know what rubies are. Um, Dorothy had her slippers made out of rubies. And if you watch Pirates of the Caribbean or pretty much any pirate movie in their treasure chest, you'll see some red stones in there. That's what rubies are. It's a, a red to pinkish gemstone. Now, the ruby itself is actually a variation of corundum, which is aluminum oxide. Sapphires, just like rubies, contain the mineral corundum. But they also contain small amounts of iron, titanium, chromium, vanadium, and magnesium. And rubies and sapphires are really hard. There's a a scale that they use to measure the hardness of of gemstones, and I can't remember what it is, and I didn't write it down because I'm on top of things like that. 
But corundum is, is really hard, and so the hardness of rubies and sapphires is right behind the hardness of diamonds. Well, they started mining for rubies and diamonds in Macon County in 1870. Now, though these gems were, were valuable uh, as for, for jewels, the mining was actually done for the abrasive value in, in sapphire and ruby. And so a lot of men were put to work in Macon County back then, digging up the corundum. But they were also digging up mica and kaolin. Now eventually the company Tiffany's did show up and, and they, they seemed kind of interested in the rubies and sapphires here. But before they could really commit to it, two other companies came in and, and beat them to the punch. And they were the American Prospecting and Mining Company and the U.S. Ruby Mining Company. And they were hoping to find a source of these rubies and sapphires. And the reason I say the source, I won't get too technical here, but a lot of minerals and gems that are down deep into earth, uh, nature just kind of pushes them to the surface. So you'll find veins of rubies and sapphires, but those veins can sometimes lead back to a, a main source. And that's what they were hoping to find, the, the mother load, I guess you could say. Well, in the early 20th century, they gave up not not able to find what they were looking for, and to this day, nobody's ever found the source of the rubies and sapphires in Macon County. Now, as far as uh, notable sapphires, I don't really have a notable ruby. I didn't find a, you know, something major for the rubies, but a notable sapphire is a 1,025 carat blue star sapphire, and it was found near Canton in 1888. Now, I'm not sure how much like one carat is or a thousand carats, but I'm assuming a thousand carats is a, a pretty big rock. But to this day, people, tourists and what have you are still up in that area and they're panning creeks and looking for rubies and sapphires. Now let's talk about some of the beliefs around rubies. Some cultures consider rubies to be a symbol of the sun. And so they would wear the ruby on their body to ward off pestilence, plague, they'd wear it for protection, they said it could increase concentration, motivation, it would bring peace, and it would give you positive energy throughout your entire body. Now, further research uh, with uh, crystal healing, it says it can help with uh, negativity, anger, love, and suffering. It also helps with fear, it gives you a better attitude, and it helps with self-love. And it's also the birthstone for July. And sapphire. Sapphire helps with tension, depression, um, bad thoughts, and spiritual confusion. It also says it can restore balance inside the body, it stimulates concentration, and it brings joy. And sapphire is September's birthstone. Now I'm going to tell you about diamonds. Now most of you have seen diamonds on movies or in jewelry shops. And a lot of you know all about diamonds. But just in case you don't, a diamond is pure carbon. So the way a diamond is made, the carbon is under extreme pressure. And so all these carbon atoms kind of start bonding together. And when they bond together, they form crystals, which is the diamond. Now diamond is the hardest known substance to man, and it's the most valuable gemstone, although I have no idea why. And I'm not trying to be a negative nilly, but I think rubies are prettier than diamonds, and I love emeralds. Um, but there's a, a lot of gemstones out there that are a whole lot prettier than a, a white diamond. And to be honest with you, um, all gemstones are valuable because man says they're valuable. There's a lot of cultures that see diamonds all the time, rubies, other gemstones, and to them they're just rocks. They they have no value, uh, but we say they're they're valuable, so... We kill each other for them. Now diamonds, they're not just used for wedding rings. Um, they're also used as abrasives because they're so incredibly hard. And if you're wondering what I mean by abrasives, you might have seen uh, cutting blades that say diamond, uh, that say something about diamonds on them. What they do is they take these gems and they crush them up into a fine powder. And then when they make the, the cutting disc or the drill bit or what have you, it's got diamond dust on it. And even the dust is really, really hard. So you, you can't really take uh, take the diamonds off these cutting devices and you know put them back together or nothing like that. They don't really hold that kind of value, but they are very, very hard. 
Now diamonds can come in other colors besides white, and that usually occurs when other elements kind of get in there with the carbon. And so you can get yellow, green, and blue diamonds when stuff like nitrogen, sulfur, and boron get into the mix. And North Carolina really isn't a, a big hub for diamonds. There's only been 13 or 14 diamonds found in North Carolina since 1893, if that kind of gives you any idea. And these diamonds they found, you know, they didn't pull some big rock out of the ground. They were actually mining for other stuff, and, and there was little bits of diamond, um, you know, mixed in with the rocks. But all the diamonds they have found in North Carolina all came from the western end of North Carolina. And so let me give you a rundown of, of what they found here. So in 1843, they found a 1.3 carat crystal from Brindletown Creek Ford in Burke County. And the largest discovered diamond in North Carolina was found in 1886. And it was a 4.3 carat diamond from Dyartsville in McDowell County. Dyartsville. Uh, Dyartsville. Anyway, McDowell County. And that diamond today actually resides in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And the last diamond ever found in North Carolina was found in 1893. And that was at King's Mountain. All right, so now let's get into the metaphysical properties. Uh, yellow diamonds, it says, makes us more considerate and thoughtful. A blue diamond will strengthen our willpower and it will inspire us to take better care of our health. A black diamond gives us courage, and a pink diamond makes us more creative. And I don't have white diamond on my list. For some reason, it didn't give me anything for that. So maybe that's a, kind of a mix of all of them. I'm not sure. And diamond is the birthstone of April. And now here we are at my favorite, emeralds. And I'm not sure why I love Emerald so much, but I have since I was a kid. Now, it could be because of the Emerald City and Wizard of Oz. Or it could be that Emerald is my birthstone. And maybe just green rocks are the coolest rocks. I have no idea, but I've been drawn to Emeralds my whole life. But what is an Emerald? Emerald is the green variety of a mineral called Beryl. That's B-E-R-Y-L. And beryl is called beryl because it's composed of beryllium aluminum cyclosilicate. Oh, I think I said that right. Anyway, two versions of beryl are emerald and aquamarine. And if you see emerald and aquamarine together, they do look very, very similar. Now, pure beryl actually has no color, but kind of like diamonds, if it gets impurities in it, it'll change color. And possible colors of beryl are green, blue, yellow, pink, black, and red. And red is extremely rare. And apparently, if you heat barrel up, it loses its color. Now, I'm assuming that applies to emerald and aquamarine. It has to. So, uh, if you have any emeralds or aquamarine, I, I wouldn't let them get too hot. Now, I said that red barrel is, is very rare, but I think it's so rare that people don't even really look for it because emerald is the most sought-after version of barrel. Now, where I said that rubies, sapphires, and diamonds can be used for abrasives, emeralds are pretty much only used for jewelry. And you can find emeralds all around the world, uh, Brazil, Colombia, and Zambia. But in North America, North Carolina has the most significant mineral deposits out of the whole continent. So, where do you find emeralds? Well, the first emeralds that were found in North Carolina were found in Alexander County in 1874. Around 1890, they found them in Mitchell County, and then 1897, they started finding them in Cleveland County. And so far, to this day, these are the only three places you can find emeralds in North Carolina. So not only does North Carolina have the most significant emerald deposit out of the whole North American continent, but there's only three main places in North Carolina that you can even find them. Now, I'm not a geologist, but I am very curious as to why that is. Now I do know, and I, I've mentioned this before, and it's debated, but the Appalachian Mountains are debatably the oldest mountain range on the planet. And though I'm not a geologist, I have to think that has something to do with it. Now if you want an idea of how important North Carolina emeralds are, in 2003, an 1869 carat emerald was found in a town called Hiddenite, and that's near Statesville. Now I'm going to bring that up and tell you a little bit more about that in a little bit. 
But I want to go over the, the healing properties like I did the other stuff. Back in the day, a lot of the older folks said emeralds could cure dysentery, prevent epilepsy, assist with childbirth, and even drive away evil spirits. As far as the healing powers, what I found, um, it says it brings peace and calming, it inspires uh, creativity or promotes inspiration, it can make people loyal in a relationship, it encourages friendship, it balances the mind, body, and spirit, it enhances psychic powers, but it doesn't provide psychic powers apparently. It gives you protection, it aids in self-expression, and it is the birthstone of May. Now I said earlier that I'm a, uh, my birthstone is emerald. My birthday is on May 5th, and that's also Cinco de Mayo. Now I used to joke around and tell people that on my birthday I like to go to the Mexican restaurants and and, you know, everybody's there cheering and getting drunk and having a big old time. And so I'd sit and pretend like everybody's there is, is celebrating me. But now I'm getting older, so uh, I'm not as happy about my birthday as I used to be. But now I need to tell you about a guy named Jamie Hill. Now, Jamie Hill, he's a North Carolinian, but his grandparents lived in the town of Hidden Knight. And that's the second time I mentioned the town Hidden Knight. I'm going to give you a rundown of, of that town here in just a little bit. But Jamie would go spend the weekends at his grandparents' house in Hidden Night. And his granny would tell him all about the history of mining for gems in Hidden Night, you know, during his time there. And just in case he didn't believe her, she also wore a 30 carat emerald that she told him she found on the railroad tracks right down the road. So this got him all riled up, and so he started at a young age looking for gems on his own. And I realized I said gems, I think gems, gems. Uh, you think that's messed up? Uh, wait till I cover wrestling. My wife can't stand it. I say wrestling instead of wrestling. I'm going to try to, when I do that episode, I'm going to try to make sure I say wrestling. But uh, go ahead and, and start forgiving me ahead of time. Anyway, he starts looking for emeralds and whatever he can find. And at age eight, he found his first emerald. And it was just laying in a cornfield near an old mine. And this really got him riled up. And so he really invested a lot of time in, in rock, what they call rock hounding. And for a long time, he did it as a hobby, a real passionate hobby, but still a hobby. But that was until 1998. You see, in 1995, his family bought 100 acres in Alexander County. And on this 100 acres was an old mine called the Wrist Mine. And so in 98, he starts exploring this mine and suddenly he finds an emerald. And then he found another emerald. And then he found another emerald. And so he starts spending a considerable amount of time digging around this mine. And then the next year, in 1999, he found something amazing. He found a vein that had 3,000 carats worth of emeralds in it. And 300 carats of those 3,000 were cut down into what they call the North Carolina Royal Family of Emeralds. And I'm going to post pictures of these but one of them is the Carolina Queen, and it's an 18.8 carat emerald, and it's valued at a million dollars. Then you got the Carolina Prince. It's 7.85 carats, and it sold for over a half a million dollars at auction. And suddenly, the whole world was paying attention to Jamie Hill. He did interviews with Oprah Winfrey, he was in People Magazine, and he was featured on the Discovery Channel. Well, they say that lightning never strikes twice in the same spot, and you can't win a lottery twice in one lifetime? Well, that's wrong here, because in 2003, he did it again. He discovered a 1869 carat emerald, and this was the largest uncut emerald to ever be found in North America. Ultimately, it would be sold to the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and it said that that, that sale price was an undisclosed amount, but a lot of sources say it was $3.5 million. And since then, he's found over 20,000 carats of emeralds there. In 2006, he found a 591 carat emerald that was 10 inches long. And that was the longest emerald ever found in North America. That one sold at a Beverly Hills auction for 155000 Now, Jamie Hill isn't the only one digging in that area. There's also the Turner Mine, the Emerald and Hidden Knight Mine, and the Adams Farm. Now, on the Adams Farm, a guy named Terry Ledford found a 310-carat emerald, 
and they took 64.83 of those carats to make a gem called the Carolina Emperor. And the Carolina Emperor is the largest cut emerald in North America. And don't forget to check the website because I'm going to try to uh, post links to pictures of these gems there. All you have to do is click episodes and all my episodes will pop up. You click this episode and that will include a description of the episode, links to my sources, and links to pictures. But anyway, let's get to what I call the honorable mentions. You see the big four, ruby, sapphire, diamonds, and emeralds, well, they're not the only thing mined in North Carolina. And there's a lot more stuff mined in North Carolina than I'm going to mention here. But first, I'll mention Hidden Knight. In fact, there's only a few places in the world that you can find it, and Alexander County is one of them. So Hidden Knight was discovered in 1879 in the town of White Plains, and it was discovered by a guy named Dr. William Hidden. Now, the whole reason Dr. William Hidden was there in Alexander County was because he was sent by Thomas Edison. Edison was using tungsten in his light bulbs, and he was looking for an alternative to the tungsten. So while this guy, Dr. William Hidden, is there looking for something to replace the tungsten, he comes across a variety of spodamine that he'd never seen before. And spodamine is a grayish-white aluminosilicate, and that's actually where they get lithium. Well, anyway, this new variety he found, he named after himself and called it Hiddenite. And eventually, the town of White Plains was renamed Hiddenite in his honor. Next is Amethyst. It's a, a violet-colored quartz, and it's found in Stokes, Burke, Lincoln, Iredell, Moore, Warren, and Franklin County. Now, the Tiffany & Company did actually operate an amethyst mine at the Tocenti Creek until, until around 1900. And then there's gold. And I covered gold in episode 31. But the first discovery of gold in North Carolina was in Carabas County in 1799. And from 1803 to 1848, pretty much all the gold in the United States came from North Carolina. And the reason that kind of ended in 1848 is because in 1849, they had the California gold rush, which led to two things in my culture that I remember the most. And that's the football team, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Scooby-Doo villain, the Minor 49er. And lastly is Rotolite. And Rotolite actually sounds like some kind of as-seen-on-TV gimmick, but it's actually a pink garnet. And Rotolite was discovered in the Cowie Valley in 1895 when they were mining for rubies. And Rotolite is two-thirds pyrope garnet and one-third alamadine garnet. And the reason they named it Rotolite is because it kind of looked like the rhododendron. And between 1900 and 1926, Rotolite was mined on Sugarloaf Mountain in Jackson County. And the last little note I have on here is that Franklin, North Carolina is the gem mining capital of the world. Now when you go up through the mountains, you, you'll find a lot of touristy uh, gem mines around. And I may put a list of them on the website. I just want to tell you, don't put your house on the market for these places. You can find some stuff there. But if these mines were putting out anything super profitable, well, then the owners wouldn't be selling tickets to tourists on the side of the road. But it is kind of fun to stop, and, and especially when you have kids and let them pan and see what they can find. My, my kids love rocks. Uh, they like blue gravel. They'll, they'll come home with pockets full of rocks. So if you have kids, uh, these places are, are super fun. Now, there is one called the Emerald Hollow Mine. And it's actually the only mine in the world that's open to the public for prospecting. And uh, since I brought that up, I'll definitely put a link to that one in the show notes. But that's the big four. And like I always say, I, I hope you learned a little something listening to this episode. Um, I think I kind of annoy my wife because I do the research for these episodes. And then while we're riding around or sitting there having supper, I'm just kind of giving her the pre-podcast. She don't listen to the podcast anyway. But I, I tell her all the cool stuff I found out while I'm while I'm researching for you guys. But we trade off. She's going back to school and, and she's actually taking North Carolina history as one of her classes. And so, you know, we, we trade uh trade information with each other. It, it's kind of fun, but uh, I wonder sometimes if I do get on her nerves. Anyway, if you did like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review because that really helps the show. It helps people find the show and, and it boosts my confidence. 
You can also follow me on Facebook by searching the NC Everything Podcast on Facebook, or I'll have a link in the description below or in the show notes, depending on where you're listening or watching. And I will say, doing this episode has kind of inspired me to maybe get out and look for some rocks. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to strike it rich, like I said, but I walk over so many rocks all the time. And uh, it's, it's inspired me to pay a little more attention. I will say I got my, my kid uh, one of them rock, uh, rock polishers a few years ago, and that was really fun. It seemed kind of like a gimmick, but we, we did it together and I had a really good time doing it. In fact, I wondered if I could build him like a, you know, an industrial size rock polisher so we could really put some big rocks in there, you know. And I'm down here in the Piedmont, and some of you know that, uh, outside of the red clay we have here, most of what you're going to find here is quartz. Quartz is actually one of the more important minerals as far as uh, uh, mineral healing goes. But I think quartz actually strengthens the power of all the other gems and, and minerals. So it's kind of like the, the energy drink for crystal healing. I do want to add that if this episode inspired you to get out and do some rock hounding, um, don't trespass. You don't want to get shot at and you don't want to go to jail. And if you're in the mountains, just be really careful. People get killed in the mountains every year. And there's, there's really nothing in those mountains that's worth your life. And if you're down east, then you're probably like me. There's probably not a, a whole lot to find. But just being outdoors can be fun, even without any kind of reward. Anyway, that's all I got. I think I smell supper cooking, so I'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.